This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the uh, social medias in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania here this evening. And we got a heck of a crew with us. It is the awesome cast. This is, this is the awesome cast. First, coming from, um, coming from a new location, the <laughs> Dudders is with us. It's Katie. Katie <laughs> She's been, she was if you're on Patreon, you got to see her bunching her happy meal. <laughs> yeah. They have tiny crocs in the happy meals. They're uh, adorable. Comes in a little croc box. A croc- a little wait, wait, croc- show the croc box again. It's a tiny croc box. Oh nice. Like a, it has a little shoe sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh you now you want to kind of keep the box, right? <laughs> it's adorable. And then they give me stickers. Mm-hmm. And then this, and then the nice thing is, is if you flip it up underneath, because I can't get it to do the thing, it's a keychain. And that has been your. Oh no, I have these. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll get to that here in a second. But we also have a friend from the West Coast. We like to say that she's in the produce produce business because uh, I don't know if we can say what she does on the show. But uh, Amanda Narcissi is with us. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. A little bit of a time shift, but good for me now. Hey, it's like it's lunchtime. Only four for, o'clock here. So. Only four o'clock. It's lunchtime. It's whatever. It's usually your siesta time, I'm sure. Whatever you guys do in San Diego. Uh. <laughs> True, no, I'm usually about ready to pack up at the office and head home right mm-hmm, about now. Mm-hmm. So. So I, I love that. This is the first time I got to see all the Disneyness on yourselves, I think. Uh, so I've been enjoying that. <laughs> Yeah, my collection mm. of, and uh, Legos and everything. Yeah, it's my nice little collection. What would you? What did we say? You were like ninety minutes from Disneyland. Yes, like uh, with traffic, ninety minutes. Jeez, so man, <laughs> I have reservations next week. To go. <laughs> of course you do. At least you don't have to worry about hurricanes at yours. I'm still like kind of watching things for my uh, beginning of November uh, anniversary vacation things. So. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see what happens there. But no, thank you. It's been good. It's good to have you on there. And and I'll try not to ask you um, um, support questions during this. Uh, so, <laughs> so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Um, Katie, since you kind of showed one off there, you know, uh, what do you got over there? I have uh, some Gunner um, uh, blue light blocking glasses. These are from the Overwatch collection. And they're... Come with this really nice case. Look how cute that is. Mm-hmm. On the front. <laughs> and then, so these are the glasses themselves. They are. Look how cute these are. <laughs> They're cat eye. Are they cute? Oh, Amanda, we must match. Oh my gosh. Do you understand why I love these? Um, but yeah, these are blue light blocking glasses. They're made for working in front of the computer. Mm-hmm. Also gaming, huge mm-hmm. for gamers. Uh, I have definitely used this. I spent a lot of time in front of a computer and I have noticed a difference using these that my eyes do not get as tired. I do not have that. Like when you turn away, like everything is kind of, you know, how your eyes are just like, we're done for the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely do not notice that. Um, I edit a lot of photos with what we do. And so like I said, I'm staring at the screen a lot and um, I really like these and I, th- I think they're really, really cute. So they're really cool. It, it, in full disclosure, we were actually sent these uh, as as kind of preview models from uh, from Gunner themselves. So so this is our we finally got a chance. Give give, give like I, I can't wear them because I have glasses already. Now you're you wear in contacts, so you can wear these a bit more. And actually, yes. you, you 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 tend to like stylish glasses anyway. So <laughs> you, yeah, these are these are great. I think these are. I'm really enjoying them. They're very lightweight. Like mm-hmm. you know, how sometimes when you wear things in your nose, by the end of the day, the day is just like this. This is bothering me. This hurts a lot. Or like this is uncomfortable. Like I don't notice them. So it, it, so it, it, yeah, these are the uh, kind of from the Overwatch collection. Not that you. I don't think you play much Overwatch. You actually don't do first person shooters at all. Because uh, I'm like terrible. 
<laughs> it's a well documented fact. Definitely we need to, pro- you know what? Well, we need to put you through like like Call of Duty boot camp or something like that. Yeah, or something easy. Well, or no, some- I, the original Call of Duty, I was all in on, and then things got weird. Mm, too exciting oh, oh they got they, they, they got they got a lot weird oh call of duty mobile maybe you should try that one out so mm-hmm. but uh yeah so yeah we've had this for a while riz, we gave riz the other one it, riz actually mm-hmm. does play a little bit of overwatch and stuff um so uh, I'm, I'm looking to get an update from him as well uh so um but no thank you for uh gunner for sending those over to try them out um i do believe we were looking into them i do believe you can get prescription versions of these glasses too mm-hmm. so if you do want a nice stylish or gaming or what you know a uh, uh, version of this that's going to be my issue because I can't really do screens without uh, 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 the glasses on um, because I'm nearsighted and maybe not even farsighted or far, you know, however you call it when you can't read up close. I don't know. I'm, I, I, where's my middle? You're getting that age. I'm getting that age. Yeah, I'm getting that age, which kind of leads to what I'm going to be talking about in, in, in a moment here. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's like I, like I have the problem with like getting prescriptions. I don't wear sunglasses because I don't want to bother with an extra set of prescription glasses and stuff, right? And and the one I got was so so weird, you know. I was like, I didn't really like the color and everything to it. So, but no, but those work for you very well. <laughs> so I'm glad you're getting some use well, out of this. Can you see Amanda? Like we we look like twins. Like we oh. have the exact same. Oh, Amanda, thing. say something so you pop up here. I know. I feel like those are perfect. <laughs> we are a little. See? Like- <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch over there. Um, so if you go to uh, gunner.com, that's uh, with it's uh, G U N N A R uh, dot com, and and I'm actually in the gaming section right now. Uh, and actually, there they are. These the Overwatch DVA Diva Toki Edition. I'm sure this is a particular carrier in Overwatch, but um, but yeah, you get an idea there. Actually, I think they're cosplaying a little bit in there. Maybe no, no, they're just headphones. Maybe actually, no. I think that is the character. I think one of the characters wears head- headphones. Um, and you can actually um, select a different, like a 65 or a 35 uh, tint to that uh, if you want to do that. And there are prescription options. So the the pair that Katie has is about 125 dollar, um, you know, through their their store, and then it's 275 if we add a prescription to it. And you actually get a lot more options when you get to the prescription as well. Um, you can add like amber and gray to it, clear transitions or anything like that. So, um, you know, really cool kind of things. And, and they have a whole, all kinds of uh, uh, styles here, gaming, readers. Um, oh, readers, that's what I need. Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Jeez. I guess I should just get some readers and see if that helps me, huh? That would probably be mm-hmm. helpful for what I'm trying to do. You could be one of those double folks, you know, where you put the... <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what? You, uh, you, listen, uh, you know, I'm watching, like, like wrestlers like Triple H doing their press conference, doing their readers and stuff, too. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know what? If it works for it works for Paul, I guess it'll work for me, too. So so go check it out. Those are Gunners. Uh, like I guess say, the, the Overwatch collection that we've been trying out here on the show. So thank you, Katie, for trying those out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gunner, for doing these. This, yeah, we like, really appreciate it. goes with your hairstyle and everything. Look at I know. this. It even, goes, it even matches my Godzilla oh, shirt. Like, I'm, I'm all in today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> look how accessorized she is over there. Uh, Amanda, what is your awesome thing of the week? Um. Yeah. So I, I think I've talked the last few times I've been on about like learning and trying to expand uh, learning how to be an engineer, basically, because I'm I'm not trained to be one. I don't know how to kind of like advance. Mm-hmm. So I found this, I believe it was a TikTok that I saw. Um, and it is called uh, Roadmap. Um, it's just roadmap.sh. And so what it is is really cool because you can go through and it's basically anything you want to learn how to do, you can click through each subject and eventually you get to like a, um, a, a like branch tree of different subjects that you should learn. So like, yeah. So you, And then if you click through even more on the yellow, it'll come up with like articles. Like, what is it? So I found this really helpful this last few weeks. I was doing some interviewing and um, needed to brush up on some things about quality assurance. And so I was able to go in and kind of rewrite my cheat sheet, kind of write about some of the things I could talk about in the interviews um, and so forth. And then I kind of also just kept digging in. So you can learn things like there's a Python section and you can learn um, like just different python cues and things like that so it's more around learning um it's pretty neat it does 
convert nicely to your phone. So I've also been trying to work on not scrolling so much. So I will pick up this as opposed to scrolling. Um, you can also keep track of what you're learning. And when you complete a section, it gives you like a little, uh, like it, it changes the color of it so that you know that you've completed it. Um, so you can eventually go through and learn all these different tech things. Uh, and if it's something that you're like, oh, I don't know anything about like uh, a certain part of your job. Like I have to work with Docker every once in a while and mm -hmm. that's a program and I know nothing about it. So I either take the tutorials or they have a section of it on this site that I can learn. So it's it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I mean, I, I know from my experience, you know, anything you learn, you need like a starting point, right? And, and it sounds like that's what you're like. You're like, where do I, yeah, where, where am I at? Where's the next point? What does this mean? And everything like that. So I love how visual this thing is uh, and interactive it is. Um, so who does this? Is this just like an open source kind of thing? I believe it is. I believe that somebody did start it, but then it kind of just goes through. Because if you click all the way through to some of the articles, they're like articles that are on people's like personal blogs mm -hmm. and articles on just how to like, like, I don't know, what is the, what is the software development life cycle? It literally clicks through to somebody's like website. So I, I so I did a little bit of clicking at the bottom here, and uh, it clicks to it's it's built by uh, at uh, Camerify, I think is the the Twitter name with a K, oh. and uh, it's this fellow um, Cameron Ahmed uh, currently building Roadmap.sh, built and it, it lists a bunch of other website developer expert and GitHub star apparently. So there you go. He probably is the one that posted the TikTok, and so I probably was just scrolling and found it, and then just, I was like, oh, that looks like fun, and so I, fun for me, I'm not sure how much fun it is for everybody else to learn this stuff, but I thought it was a pretty cool thing. Katie, I have stats and numbers for you on, on this website I think you'll be interested in uh, as a data nerd. Uh, so they have a, a, they have a roadmap.sh is the seventh most starred project on GitHub visited by hundreds of thousands of developers, and it has some of them, um, 294K GitHub stars, registered over a million registered users, uh, 270K Discord members, things like that. So, um, so yeah, they have a little more detail down here. And, and I like there's a little more, uh, what was it, a skill-based one? Let's say role-based. You can go skill-based road roadmaps as well. Like, and that, that's talking about like computer science. So the first one, the skill base we're talking about, that was like front end, full stack, iOS, QA, UX design, things like that. Skill bases, we're talking like computer science, JavaScript, Python, uh, and then project ideas. There you go. Best practices, questions. Uh, so there you go. Good place to start if you're uh, looking to get into uh, the coding like that. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. Oh, I'm next, aren't I? <laughs> so, so, um, I, uh, I, I, I've been asking a lot of questions, I, I guess, in the Slack. I can't remember if I did this on the group or not. So um, I like playing the games on, on my phone, even though I think I'm going to need reader glasses in, glasses in order to do it in here in the near future. Um, so the way that I've been doing it is, you know, of course, like, uh, geez, I think around when the iPhone 13 came out, they started allowing you to use Xbox controllers and PlayStation controllers and Nintendo Switch controllers and things like that. So I had bought something like this is actually my Nimbus controller that I have for my Apple TV. And it's a nice kind of Xbox 360 style um, kind of controller, right? Um, so, you know, and you get these little, this little um, um, plastic thing on here that's going to hold the phone above it and everything like that, right? Uh, my issue has been like as I play it and, you know, you're kind of moving, playing a fighting game, you're moving the screen or this thing flops down in, in, you know, on top of it. Uh, I'm sure Katie has seen me when we're on trips and I, I get tired and this thing falls on my face. Uh, so, you know, things like that. So I wanted to try a different form factor to play in the games on my phone. I didn't want to pay a hundred dollars for a backbone necessarily. I felt like, uh, what I wanted wasn't, I wasn't ready to invest that much into this. I don't even know if I was going to like this, the, 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 the style. I don't have a Nintendo switch, have not played much with a portable Nintendo switch to know if I like that kind of style of things. So what I ended up getting was, uh, this is a about a forty dollar one. Although I understand it's a lot cheaper on Tibu if or Temu if you if you look it up there and have some more patience. Uh, this is the Shanwan Q13 
And there's the a nice box for a random uh, Chinese company kind of thing. And I'm going to say that because it's a, it is one of those things where good luck getting support. So it's one of these kind of slider things. It's got the controllers on the side. I like this one because it's very um, Xbox feel uh, you know, to it with everything. The X, Y, A, Bs. There's a lot of ones that had like the PlayStation um, controllers to it. And, uh, and, and, and the other concern is, is it going to work well with my large iPhone 16 Max, uh, you know, um, kind of thing, and uh, and it works very well. I do have this um, this case on here, which I guess I can talk about as another um, um, kind of item of the week too, uh, and, and it is kind of bumped up a little bit here, but I think it's very playable and stays for the most part. I've only played a little bit with it because I was having some issues. I'll get to in a moment, but again, like. Um, let me just load up like Call of Duty or something. Can you see how that goes? And it, it connects Bluetooth and kind of goes from there. So you're not worried about a USB-C or how, if you do have a case, how it's going to kind of shape in there or anything like that. Um, so it, it does It does have, it doesn't feel as good as an Xbox controller. It definitely has a little bit of that plasticky feel to it, but um, it hasn't been too terrible so far. I do notice the um, this bottom A, a button next to the thumbstick may become a problem here at some point but playing a little bit of call of duty and everything it's felt pretty nice at least like the the mobile call of duty um that that comes with it comes on uh, uh, um, ios and, and of course it's bluetooth it's also compatible with uh, android phones as well uh or should be um so the other thing is on the back is you do have two or on each side you have two um uh buttons here programmable buttons uh they are originally set up to also mimic the triggers and the bumpers on the top so if that feels a little bit better for you with this form factor you can do that from from here now i think shooting games that becomes a little bit of a problem or assassin's creed if you're just using your kind of middle buttons here i you know maybe adjust your grip or something like that um so the issues have come into and amanda knows this because i've been doing this on i've been asking questions over on the um over on the, the the slack page it wouldn't work with my iphone 16 plus max it works on my 13 it works on missy's 16 uh what is it plus what are we, yeah they're the plus series right i don't know i'm getting my my iphones mixed up so I had to look up, I was like, I actually had the, I had the return already started on Amazon. I was just, I just was fussing with it for two nights. It was just completely done with it. Uh, uh, none of us knew what to do with it. Firmwares are updated. iOS was updated. And now I'm going to check something because now I'm curious. I went and looked on a mobile, uh, 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 online for a, a, you know, because this is already packed away, kind of ready to be sent off. And uh, I was really kind of curious. And and yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Um, there is a setting on this device that turns it into quote unquote cloud mode by hitting like a button and the power button that was not enabled. And as soon as I enabled it, everything worked perfectly. Guess what's not in the manual <laughs> that came with this thing. So, um, and also if you go to shamwan.com, all in Chinese, um, and I in none of my websites, none of my browsers would translate it. So, um, so I couldn't even figure out that. Even it didn't even look like it had anything. It looks like they were just uh, you could download APKs from there. Like I we, like I clicked on something, and I think I was downloading a APK of Pal World or something like that for Android. So that's what's going on over there. Um, they also. Again, this is one of those like I mean, it's just like getting that screen for the car for CarPlay that you're like I paid fifty bucks for this thing, and if it doesn't work, good luck. You don't have, you have no support whatsoever because I don't I can't even tell you what the company was. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much this is worthwhile and how much this is questionable. They have a controller app on here, and um, the idea is they give you is uh, it's not connected. No, no, no. I know, I know, it's not connected. That's fine. I didn't do it. So it gets you this app that you're able to scroll through. And it's going to give you games that you can play. And it says, hey, you can play this on Xbox or you can play this on, on the App Store. Like it's got Fortnite and, you know, it says you can stream that from things or GeForce Now and things like that, right? Like it's listing things like Avengers, uh, uh, Fortnite, Forza Horizon 5, Life is Strange, True Colors, Watch Dogs 2, uh, Grand Theft Auto on, on the App Store. So it, 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 it's it's this is completely unnecessary, <laughs> but it does also provide something that may 
or may not um, update your phone. I don't know. I couldn't get it to update or it said there was no update available or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, there is a game po- gamepad test in here. There's a cache clear in here. I don't know if that cache is on the phone or on the controller. It's kind of unclear to me. I'm actually just amazed the thing is in English. Uh, so, uh, again, it's 40 bucks. Um, so far, so good. And if the thing biffs on me, I did pay $3 for the Amazon Assurion insurance. So, um, you know, if it does get weird on me after, like, a, I got two years on this thing. So I, I feel like that's a pretty good, um, you know, pretty good thing for that. So, again, that's the Shamwon Q13, although I don't know if you can see it listed as that on Amazon. <laughs> so, um, but it, it was the one that had the least difficulty i have i keep looking up there's actually a video on youtube that says buyer beware but i think they're talking more about the app situation than the controller itself so um there you go i i'm not surprised to have some weirdness with it but i'm happy with it and uh so far so good we just got to work on my eyeballs and i need to see an eye doctor very soon uh so <laughs> um yeah so there's that i don't know uh, amanda have you ever tried any controllers like this um, I don't know how much you're, you're doing any kind of controller based gaming on your, uh, uh, I devices. No, I broke down and bought a switch about six months ago. <laughs> I'm addicted to my switch. Um, so that does look a lot like a switch and an Xbox controller had a baby. It does. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and there's versions of, I think Shamwon themselves may even sell, but there's definitely ones that look like Nintendo switch. So again, I was like, give me the one that feels like an Xbox controller. You can go and be like, give me one that looks like a Nintendo Switch, and then you're good to go, right? I just didn't like kind of the button placement and things like that. So, but well, that's uh, kind of cool. Yeah. I am um, no, I started doing some gaming on iPad, mm-hmm. and I just broke down and bought an Xbox controller, and then I prop it up and kind of just use it as a mini TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I do game a lot on my Apple TV, but not my. It's for some reason my phone. I thought it was too small. I tried, and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Which is such a, shame, such a shame because it's it's the most powerful mobile device it's, I have, right? And so, it is the biggest phone. Like, I yeah, have yeah. But also, it is I'm the still, biggest. Like, no, it's still too small. <laughs> I literally have the biggest. Like, I was, you know, it would work with the 13. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just play this on my 13. But I'm just like, no, I need that extra, like, 0.2 inches or whatever it is. That's the difference between them. Like, because I, I, I know it's like, it's like the bevel comes out more. And I don't know why it makes a damn difference. <laughs> so, um, but no, I, I appreciated that. Uh, the other thing I was trying, I was trying to figure out this problem. I want to play these games that are on my phone that are not like the Netflix games, right? Don't have uh, Apple TV versions. And they have like Grand Theft Auto and they have the Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge and they have um, uh, Hades and, and, and th- like good console games. Um, but they're only for the mobile version. Uh, great if I have an iPad that could run these things, but my, my newest iPad's a original iPad Pro that is uh, making sound things like this. It has a job. I'm not going to play games on it. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, so so that's kind of where I'm at with that. So, um, and I guess my secondary thing, I, I followed Chilla's advice from last week. Because he had those, uh, I don't know, Katie, if you saw the iPhone Bondi Blue like uh, uh, iMac color cases that we were showing off last week. Maybe I did on the, not see this. Yes. So this is Spigen, Spigen, something like that. Spigen. I like to say Spigen. Um, but uh, I wanted something that covered the the cameras because that's kind of one of the most important things for the upgrade so it's a nice little slider here uh the biggest difficulty is just now remembering why when i go go do a qr code to do that extra flip kind of situation um also i kind of i'm kind of like looking forward to when it um loosens so it's not not as much of an effort to push that over so um i I don't know if you guys have done any any of these slider kind of cases like this there seem to be a lot of them now and i don't feel like i saw them or maybe i just wasn't looking for them before i was just thinking how that you would have to remember to also flip it open before you use the camera button on the side the new button yep yep so now i've added like another (laughs) thing to it i keep forgetting the, the camera buttons there the other thing is because it's exposed on this case, right? Like it's open on that case. I keep thinking the phone goes this way because that's where it used to be open oh. to do the switch, right? <laughs> so I I kept grabbing it by that button. Mm-hmm. So like when I picked up my phone for like the first like few days, it would initiate the camera, <laughs> and I would be like, "No, I didn't mean to do that." 
Yeah, I need like a day to just like just sit with the camera and you're like, okay, this works this way, this way, you know, understand that, right? So, um, because I was like, oh, right, I can just do it this way. I was taking pictures last night. We had uh, uh, Tim Vitulo and uh, and Mike uh, Mike Dawson in here for Fishing Without Bait. And I'm like, it was like really cool to like actually pick this up, take a picture, you know, uh, remember to do this. Because the problem is I keep hitting it and wondering why everything's black. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. And have to do this. So, um, but then I went to change it. Oh, the other big thing, Katie, I know this is something that's not new to you that you've been showing me. That 5X is beautiful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that 5X <laughs> zoom is so good. It is. Yeah. If there's somebody sitting on the couch and I want a closer shot, that's the shot I want is that 5X. It's perfect for, for this field of vision or the band over there or something like that here in the studio, right? So. Um, Just the, enough. Yeah, it is. It's just enough, just a push. Uh, and I was also appreciating when we were at AEW, um, the inset, when you're at 5X and you're zooming into digital, it shows you how far into it you are. Um, uh -huh. So that... So you I can would, figure out where you're at. It's mm -hmm. not like a, oh gosh, let me just keep moving this around. Yeah, exactly. So like it, it gives you, it gives you a more idea of, of where you're at. It just, it reminds me of like Final Cut. If I super zoom in the Final Cut, I'll show me where on the square on the 169 I am and stuff like that. Right. So, um, like it, it, it was a perfect translation for something like that. So really, really free. So that has been the iPhone stories, iPhone <laughs> quirk segment of the show. So I've only had this for a week, I guess. So I guess it is still a little new to me. So, um, let's give a shout out to our friends over on Patreon at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Uh, it might be checking out right now. We had a little bit of a chatter before, uh, we went live on the Sorgatron Media or the Patreon only feed, I guess, uh, over there. So I uh, appreciate anybody that may be tuning into that. See what's going on as we're just kind of poking that stuff or Katie's eating her happy meal on the air or in front of camera because I left the camera on her. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, uh, 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 high value content, right? <laughs> it's my whole head. It looks like it's just my head. There you go. There you go. <laughs> But thank you, everybody, that does support the show that way and uh, gets our extra Patreon content when we record it as well. Our friends at the uh, Coffee Club level, Cynthia Klosky, and our fans of the show, uh, Michael Fedor, John DeGore, and Dave Ponder. I thank you, everybody, for supporting the awesome cast and keeping it rolling and helping pay those uh, podcasty bills. So let's get into some more news and uh, discussion topics. Yep, yep, it's the news. Um... Amanda, I just have one that says Fable. And I don't know what that means. Is it the game? No. So it's a it, Although I've been wanting to start to play. I'm a cozy gamer, so I'm still trying to figure out what is a cozy game. And what now, let me that. introduce you to Call of Duty Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, you should try this game. And then I, I get like five minutes into it. And I was like, sensory overload. And mm -hmm, just stop mm -hmm. playing it. Mm -hmm. Um. Fable is, so we are all OG um, social media friends, and we all remember Get Glue, right? <gasps> I still have some of those stickers floating around my office. <laughs> I still have stickers, too. They're actually on an art bin, like, in the corner that's mm -hmm. filled with paints and stuff. So Fable was uh, a new app I stumbled upon, and this is the website that I listed um, here. It is basically books and TV shows and social media mixed together. Oh. And you can track what you're watching. You can track what you're reading. And then you can talk to other people about it. And you can even start your own book club. And they will help you, like, form the book club in your community. Mm. Um, another cool thing about them is, is that, and I just saw this recently, um, authors are releasing their books on this site for free so you can go on there and if you're following a certain author they may put the man the book up there before anybody else gets it um it is a beautiful app the app works really great um i had downloaded it onto my phone again it's one of those things where i'm trying to scroll less um or find more meaningful places to put my energy on the phone and so I stumbled across Fable and I thought it was really cool because I am reading more books um, that I thought it was a great place. To, and I don't like Goodreads. I tried it and it just wasn't 
for me to track what I was reading or try to get inspiration. So I'm a couple of days into this one and I feel like it's a lot, it's a lot better. And I, it reminded me a lot of Get Glue because like back in the day, that's all you did was log and talk about, and then you got the sticker. Mm-hmm. So it was cool. Awesome. Trying to send up here. I think I, I got to create a username and everything. <laughs> So, yeah, because I feel the same way about Goodreads. Like, I, I am not a huge fan of Goodreads. I don't like that I really have to tell people what I'm reading and where I'm at with things. And I know there's options to not share, but then you don't get the same use out of the the app. And it's kind of frustrating for me. And um, so I like something like this. I, I like the fact that it's much prettier. <laughs> than, you know what I mean? Like, it's more dynamic. Um, because, yeah, I'm doing a similar thing. I, I, I've gotten a Kindle recently. And gotten back into that, and it's a po- you know I keep it it's pocket size. I could just take it wherever I want, and now I'm getting into reading again. And um, but yes, I like this much better and much more. Like I, I don't know, I'm not. <laughs> you know us, we like beautiful dynamic things. I'm I don't if, if it's too boring, I can't get into it. I can't pay attention. Like there's too many words or letters, and I'm like oh, I'm gone. I can't figure this out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I like it too. You were just on the part, it'll track what you're reading. So if you have a goal mm-hmm. of like what you want to read, it will give you a little tracker at the top of like, did you read today? And then it will like allow you to click on it and count what you, uh, how much you read that day. Um, so it, I really like that aspect too. And it'll allow you to import as you just saw in your sign up thing there. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll allow you to import your library from like Kindle or Goodreads or what you've already written. Um, I wish Apple Books was on there because that's when I do read digital, that's where all my books live. Um, I'm still a big person that goes to Barnes and Noble and like has the membership to Barnes and Noble and will go to Barnes and Noble all the time. Um, so I have more like tangible books, but so uh, I really like that. All right, so there's a, a bit of an ongoing project here. Let's see, what was I just watching? Still going through this process. <laughs> and I told her I was born in 91, so that's going to be interesting too. Oh, there you go, Last Airbender. That's what I'm going to go with. There we go. Um, yeah, no, I'm loving the kind of the onboarding here. It is a nice app here. And it's kind of interesting because, I mean, I, I don't know how much success there is Um that oh i can i can also import my netflix um um watch list into this too that's fun okay that might that might be good to get me to remember what's in my netflix watch list so uh, do you see a lot of places like this that kind of have a built-in social network because i feel like everything's so outward these days or is this kind of the next phase of people coming back around into these very um dedicated kind of app network kind of things um, I'm not sure because I've only done this one and then I have a Lego. Lego released a social media site Ooh. that you can actually go on and like post your Legos and get ideas from other people and pretty much so talk Lego talk. Um, and it's dedicated on there um, through their site. Uh, so I, 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 I I'm finding more people are gravitating to those kind of niche places instead of the places where they are unforced, uh, they're forcefully <laughs> fed things like ads and things that they're not interested in. So versus going and have these conversations on other social media sites where people will just completely bury you for your honest opinion on something, including media and things like that, right? Pretty much. Or that you create original content and then your content's not really seen. Hmm. Um, because you have a niche, whereas these are niche spaces just for those types of people. So Mm -hmm. like um, where I want to talk books on something like Instagram, I'd be buried, like nobody would ever see it. But on Fable, I could talk about books and I would have a community there. Um, are you seeing, are you kind of like just poking, you said you're, you're just a couple days into this app, right? So you're, just, you're, are you mostly just looking for recommendations at this point or are you finding any inter- interactive points? Um, I'm just pretty much so poking around it and trying to see like what it's like. I've used it for tracking this week, um, to read. I also got offered a free book from Roxanne Gay, who's like a really great author. Um, she, uh, posted her book up there for free. So I was able to download it and start reading a couple pages of it. 
um, before it even hits the shelves. I, I don't even think it's ready to be published yet. So um, I've just been kind of doing that and like playing around in it. A lot of my friends and I have been talking about starting a book club at work um, because there's a bunch of us who just kind of have that moment where we don't want to be staring at a screen anymore. So we all talk books and like share books at work and everything. So this is something that um, would kind of probably go hand in hand with that is that we could work on that together. Awesome. Uh, the app, I believe, is uh, it was, it was, we're looking at iOS. I imagine it's on Android as well. And trying to confirm that real quick. I don't see it. Don't see the app. So like, I like the binge part of the TV show because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I have so many places that I watch shows on my yes. phone and I pay for so many different services that I forget what I have saved where. And I'm like, oh, I forgot in Hulu I had this or I had this there. So that's nice to have it like in one place to be like, oh, remember you were binge watching this. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it was over in Hulu or Tubi. <laughs> That's my, that's my, um, uh, thankfully the Apple TV kind of keeps a lot of that together, except Netflix since they get left off. Right. So this kind of might help bridge the gap for something like that to remind me sometimes like, Oh wait, I have stuff on Netflix. Oh, I never finished this series and put it on for a couple episodes and then forget it for another three weeks. <laughs> so kind of thing. So, um, no, I, I definitely appreciate that kind of thing and just watch, just reset everything. So I don't know. I, all my stuff is gone. <laughs> so what i was looking for stuff so that's fable fable.co and you go check that out on your independent oh three body problem that's another one i gotta watch um but uh yeah go check that out um where am i at over here we got that we got that oh brian brian crawford shared a really fun one um he has a video that will hopefully load here in a second uh over on facebook he visited the um the uh tech the the museum of science in boston and look they got a little robot dog <laughs> the uh boston dynamics uh dog thing i haven't heard about these things for a while so they haven't done anything creepy uh, or they're keeping it too quiet i don't know uh but there's some video of it uh climbing in the steps and going down steps and things like that I, oh those are complicated steps you see that <laughs> They're like kind of more squared off. So looks like he's in his pen. Just doing doing rounds and checking things out and going on patrols. Jeez. I can't look at those things anymore without that Black Mirror episode. It's kind of ruined it for me. So thanks, Brian, for letting us know as he's on his travels, what's going on uh, in uh, Creepy Robots in Boston. So um, another thing. This might be something uh, that you guys might be interested in. You like planning things. Um, this was, I, I didn't get too deep into it. There's this app called Party Full. And um, I was listening to a podcast. They were having an anniversary um, like a, a, for something. And and they were having a picnic. And they, they, they mentioned this app that um, is really low key and does RSVPs. And it's independent of like, you know, you create something on Facebook and not everybody's on Facebook or they get buried with stuff or notifications or something like that. Um, so this one actually kind of deals supposedly in text messages for your invitees and, and some special RSVPs. It's called Partyful. Um, this is actually just an article about it here. And it seems to be kind of like a one-stop like uh, website um, for, for this. Um, it does, I believe, have apps over on uh, your, your iPhone as well. And you can create your party invite and everything in the, in the app. So, um, and again, just something just relatively independent. It's not a, it's not a meetup.com. It's not a facebook.com, you know, or anything like that. And it's pretty straightforward. So I feels like, you know, and, and no ads, no spam, anything like that. They're mentioning here in this article. Um, so I, you know, I thought, I thought that's something you guys might be interested in as we, uh, you know, do our events and things like that and maybe looking for other options, you know, um, you know, but I, I, I presume this is like kind of more of a direct thing, not like I have an event I want to invite the entire world to kind of situation. Like if you have a very specific, like, um, like, you know, Hey, it's Katie's birthday party. Let's make sure, let's make sure we know who's coming <laughs> and, 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 and make sure nobody is going to ruin the party. Right. Everybody, only, <laughs> only the people that like happy meals. Yeah, exactly. I like it because it, it looks, um, so there's not a ton of options that are really great for um, if, you know, text messages working with like, especially when you're like producing like long, larger events, because um, you need to do things like I might send out like if you use like a auction site like BidPal or mm -hmm. something where you want to be able to tell folks that they, um, 
you know, they need to still fit on things. But I like, I like that this is like much more interesting Mm -hmm. than it is like some of the ones that are so just bland and just like, this is exciting. There's themes and it's just, you know, like it seems a little bit more, um, a little more all encompassing. And like I said, it's, and there's so many different apps for events now that are just, it's just, yeah, they're so not great and this I, I really i really want to try this one because it see, looks a lot more fun you see these functions here so you can send a text blast through it and uh they, they gotta be doing there's gotta be a pay thing in there because that's going to cost them money right i'm sure um mm-hmm. ask questions and collect info going into the event and also ask the guests to chip in if you got something that, that requires it or something like that um venmo cash app paypal whatever the case may be um and it's on it's on your app stores so you can go grab that and try it out oh we, here's some of the there we go um yeah part of full fun party invites is the app on there i think we're all gonna like be, we're all gonna be poking at that a little bit i think so i feel like i, I feel like i got one of these for a restaurant opening when i was still back doing bold i think that it was very art it was very new at the time mm-hmm. Like, I just remember the logo with the star up, that's up at the top. I remember the app logo, and I think that was it, that somebody had sent one, a PR firm. Mm-hmm. It was kind of interesting. It was different. It was definitely different. I like it. Try that out. I want to get one of these from one of you guys. Uh, <laughs> that's my that's my slideway. Please invite me to things. Uh, <laughs> please get me out of the house. Um and also, uh, the AI is getting in your Gmail for iOS. Has anybody gotten this yet on theirs? That little star pop up for you yet? That's going to uh, um, this actually is going to be really handy for me on the workspace side, where it's like summarize this email thread. Because <laughs> I mean, we've we've all been part of the giant email thread at work and stuff like that, right? Um, so I, and I know this is Gmail, so not everybody's thing is going to be in there. Um, but, and I don't know, and everybody's going to have AI in their email here shortly when, uh, when, uh, Apple releases some stuff here at the end of the month, I suppose. Um, but, um, but yeah, so yeah, summarize was one, one idea. One thing that was a uh, part of it, according to this article over the verge, I got to poke at it a little bit here, um, earlier today, uh, realizing, you know, what was going, you know, realizing that was already, um, out as part of this, um, so I, I don't know. I'm still I'm still kind of out to lunch on the uh, the Gemini thing. I've been kind of avoiding it whenever it pops up in my stuff. Um, but it does give you options. <laughs> How can I help you today? Show unread emails from today. Show unread emails from this week. Get the status of my recent orders, for instance. So, um, but you know they're already doing part of this when they're uh, kind of uh, uh, sorting things because I know I get the kind of like those ah, that's the wrong button those sort tabs. You know, like the promotions and the updates and things like that, which are I find really handy on Gmail. Um, so I think it's just another part of that. Did they ever disclose <laughs> where, well, how much of your emails is going to what part of the, uh, LRM in that thing <laughs> or is it, or anything like that? Or we're just kind of presuming Google's just doing whatever with whatever at this point. I just assume Google's going to Google. And yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I imagine the security is not going to be that great. So I feel like it's, it's Google. I mean, I, I, I guess that should be a point to reiterate for many. Um, don't put in text something you don't want to be public, right? Um, those little those little disclaimers at the bottom of uh, emails that says this is for only for the intended user, you know, recipient, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, I don't think that has much standing <laughs> when you're sending to a Google account or something like that. Um, so, and plus people that, you know, uh, uh, how many um, lawsuits have we seen that have had the most inane thing in an email, smoking gun email, right, over the years? So, um, both political and business, right? Uh, so, yeah, I think that's that, that, that kind of goes with the territory there. So, but... Um, but yeah, so let's roll one out for your Gmails and, uh, also got that. I wanted to share this. I don't think I talked about this on the show. Katie, tell me if I'm wrong. Cause I know you were here for this one. Um, when we were filming this, well, we got a last month, we actually put this video out where, no, that's you still have, don't have my button straight. So we did this, uh, interview. We saw these guys, God, Katie, do, this is in Williamsport. We, what was the, what was the one before this where we saw him? It was at the event before in May, right? that we saw these guys walking around with his backpack yes. and it's a Pelican case, I believe. And they have this structure and they have a bunch of LIDAR equipment on it. So yeah, it is. There it goes. It's a Pelican case. 
Uh, I'm glad I got that shot. And so what they're doing on the Baja track is you're allowed to go for these track walks when we go out for these Baja events, right? The students are allowed to go out and kind of keep an eye on what, you know, see what all the obstacles are and everything that they have to deal with. And um, man, really good B-roll on this video. I'm glad I did that. Uh, so um, when they're walking the track, they're taking LIDAR of it so they can actually like input that information and further analyze what's going on. These guys were... Uh, I'm going to try to recall from the interview because I edited it like a month ago. Um, but I, I believe he, he was like a computer science student and then he got on the Baja team, which is more mechanical engineering, right? And he's like, how do I apply what I'm doing here? And this is um, this is the Blue Jays. This is uh, John Hopkins, actually, University, that uh, uh, team that was working on this. So that was really cool to see. I did not see the backpack in Michigan. I was sad to see that, not, not see that last month, but I think the guy graduated. I think, I think he very easily got a job. <laughs> out of this um so and they're even discussing uh you know does this get you know passed on can other teens kind of purchase this down the line or something like that to be able to do this kind of function so they said the biggest thing and i love somebody commented on this video because uh they said why is this guy wearing this because he's the tallest guy on the team so uh that because you see the the if you're on the video with us the lidar is going over his head so it needs like a nice you know as many inches as they can to, you know look down on the track to get those readings so um somebody commented that they're now investing in a seven foot robot to wear the jetpack wear the backpack since uh yeah jetpack uh wear the backpack since they don't have anybody tall on their team anymore so there you go so that's a fun video that's over at the sae university programs that's the innovative lidar backpack tech at baja williamsport 2024 uh, if you want to go look for that video, we'll uh, share it as well. I think I have it shared over on the group and stuff. So go check that out. So I know, Katie, you saw you saw that one in action a little bit. Oh, that was really neat to see. I thought that was really cool. I'm just walking around, walking up and down the hills. And <laughs> we, we kept seeing this. And we're just, we just like finally like just kind of tackled like, yo. What is this <laughs> that you're doing here? So, because I mean, like, we've done enough auto drive to rec recognize the equipment. And I'm like, what is he in automate? What is happening? You know, it just, it, we couldn't connect, you know, the technology with the use at Baja yet, you know, and that was really cool that we got to grab them. And um, I think, I think that was it. I think they were blocking passes. We were looking for somebody else. I think we we're looking for the tank car, <laughs> weren't we? <laughs> and we're like, you get over here we need to interview you <laughs> so um but uh, good. we have a lot of fun with those interviews and looking forward to be doing a, a few more with those as well so um and i think that's everything i have tagged here guys is there anything else i'm missing for this week i'm not interesting <laughs> <laughs> that's fine that's fine I feel like I should, is it, I, it's so funny we go into these and i'm like I feel like I saw or did a thing. Oh, you, do you want my tip of the week? Yes, you, absolutely. Like tip of the, don't reuse your passwords. Ah, yes. Don't reuse your passwords because folks will be able to get into your things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that is an applied science for this week, right? A hundred percent. Don't reuse your passwords. Kitty has had an interesting <laughs> couple of weeks of information um, technology. <laughs> from what yes. I understand. So um, there you go. Put all of my skills to use. And, and also have a plan for when somebody leaves a leaves a company or a group. Because mm -hmm. that's that's really important too, especially if it's badly. Uh, so Yes. And it has to be done quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a reason. There's a reason some people's emails and everything are shut off before they, they, they hit the exit. Right? Because like there's... And then... Uh, you, we can we can go to Patreon on this one. I guess I feel like I'm going down a road, <laughs> but <laughs> but we won't do that because we're happy that Amanda is here joining us again and uh, and everything. So uh, uh, Amanda, uh, I know I know you're you're enjoying the new. Is, is there anything? I feel like you're intimately aware of things going on with iOS and things like that. Are there is there anything that you think that people out there in in Awesome Cast Land? don't know they can do with the new OS or new phones? I would say just keep exploring that camera button. Yeah. <laughs> I am using it so much to kind of like, um, cause I'm very much so out. Uh, I really have a thing about videoing the sunsets here. I know it's such a California thing to say, um, but uh, I live near a pier, and so I am constantly out there. And I did take it out and just tried to some different 
of the scaling and like um, changing the aperture with the button, uh, doing the zooming, changing the different of the scaling. I'm just kind of playing with it to just kind of um, get like see what can happen with it. Um, I'm also a big one on, I just got this really, I've just really started to get into the action button also. And I've started to write shortcuts for them. Ooh. So the action button, I actually made it into, uh, I made a shortcut that makes it a list so that you can actually do multiple things with it, not just uh, do not disturb or the flashlight or whatever the standard ones are. You can make shortcuts and one of them was uh, a list and then you can tap on the list to like open voice memo, open this app, do this, do that. And it makes it more complex. Um, a lot of my coworkers made the action button their Tesla startup. <laughs> um, so they'll tap that button before the, as they're walking to their car and their car will unlock and like start up and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so just trying to play a little bit. Um, everything's online. Like if you just Google, like, I want to do this, it's all there. Like somebody's already done it and like has a tutorial on how to do it. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm big on the Reddit thread of like shortcuts and stuff. That's my new rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, I set it up because I, I uh, you know, I, you know, some of the shows I listen to is like, oh, I make that chat GPT. They were talking about on the previous phone. Right. And, and I've been trying to use that voice chat. Oh, uh, uh, if you guys have time to stick around for Patreon, I know what I'm going to do on Patreon. Um, I was drinking a lot on Saturday night and I was talking to chat GPT and I got it to talk to time cop the movie when I passed out and I meant to share this. Uh, so I'm going to hold on and put a pin in that one for later. Uh, no. So yeah, so it, it's part of my, you know, send that button for it. I almost wish I had more buttons cause it's like, I'm having a little bit of like, Oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do this. But wait, how do I mute this thing now? You know, <laughs> things like that. And I know it's in the drop down and stuff like that. And you can, um, the phone seems infinitely customizable at this point to the point where there's almost too much to do. And you get a little bit overwhelmed if you're, I think a regular user, that's my only concern with things like that. But, um, but I'm, I'm appreciating that because you can set up, oh, I usually do this, this, and this. Let's put it up front. Or this is something that I always forget about because it's buried. Let's put it up front, right? Like that seems to be the, the best kind of strategy, I think, it, for these kinds of things. Yeah, that and the widgets. I'm a huge widget mm -hmm. user. So literally the apps I use the most are a widget. Yep. They're not even the app. Yep. The apps are away. I don't even have apps like on my main screen. Wow. They're, oh, they're hidden. Everything's a widget. So except for like the four main apps, which is like Slack, text, uh, the roadmaps one and uh, another one are down at the bottom mm -hmm. as like my main apps. But everything else is widgets on the first like few pages of my of my screens. See, I brought like, all the most important things become widgets, calendars. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fitness pro, um, mm -hmm. uh, headspace, all of it is, it's all widgets. Yeah. Cause they're, 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 they're probably live with stuff. Like I, I've been probably bring the video games up because I'm, I'm like, you need to sit down and do something, you know, just play, you know, these are things you want to play. Don't, and you keep forgetting about it. And then they, and then it's like a month and they have to the download a two gig update. <laughs> so, um, awesome. Uh, so thank you, Amanda, for being here, hanging out with us again. Thank and, you for having me. Uh, and uh, you are uh, what, you're you're still you're still rock on Instagram, correct? We can see those sunsets up there, right? <laughs> yes, Amanda in SoCal. There you go. And Katie also has a well, she, she's got a lot going on. You were at a Steelers game. You were on the screen at Steelers game, oh, yeah. avoiding the thunderstorm and the lightning. I had to hide under by by, by the Brewsters when it came out. <laughs> so. Uh, what a what a crazy Friday! Then what, what were you at yesterday? Women's something or other, right? Some other sports ball. Oh, I was a uh, yeah, I was uh, uh, TJ uh, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, ladies uh, did a pink out for four one two thrive, and then tonight their guys uh, team was doing that. And then our month, there's a ton of pink outs for four one two thrive. It's your month. It's your month. Congratulations! Mm -hmm. So and Thank also, you. it's my favorite. I saw. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> I saw yeah, it was your friend. Yeah, October used to be your favorite for a different reason. Uh, 
<laughs> you always land on October. Uh, so, um, and also shout out to our friend David Orr, who I, I saw was at the at the pink out with you guys on uh, on, on Sunday as well. So it was really cool. Uh, to yeah, see the crucial there. catch uh, at Sailor game. He yes. was on the field. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, he was on the sideline. I saw some pictures from that on his Instagram. So, uh, mm -hmm. local comedian. We've done some work with him in the past. Maybe does a couple other things that we're involved in. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kate Marie. Uh, I'm sorry, Katie Dudis dot com. Mixing sure. it with all your handles uh, for all her social media's links and everything that's going on with her. I'm at Sorgatron basically everywhere uh, to see what's going on with me and see in clips from this and other great podcasts. Again, shout out. Please go check out Fishing Without Bait. We had a uh, part one of our interview with uh, Tim Vitulo and um, and uh, Mike. Uh, I just said it earlier in this thing and now escapes me. I'm so sorry. Uh, so either way, it's on fishingwithbait.com. Uh, fishingwithoutbait.com. They got a new album coming out called uh, Lunar... I just did all these before. Looter, looter something. Um, man, this is the worst send out ever. I'm just going to get out of here then. Guys, it's been a, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.